Hello everyone, how are you all doing? Welcome to this quick tutorial crash course into making sounds with uh, Tick80 using the tracker that they have. Um, so I was trying to look that up, how to do that for uh, a demo that I did and ended up teaching Genio how to use the tracker here. So I kind of know all the things inside and out and how they are different from the usual trackers that you are used to if you're a demo singer or a tracker musician. So I'm gonna quickly explain all these things so you can get a jump start on using stuff. So the first thing you want to do when you're in the editor is to go to the sound effects editor. You can uh, also do F4 to go there. And this is where you can create sound effects, what they call sound effects, which uh, in our normal terms, we would call them uh, instruments. So um, in here you have a total of 16 available waveforms that you can draw around. You can see that by default there were already three of them here. A uh, quick um, square wave sort of thing. You can see you can even drag them and change them. Uh, slightly lower thing. Uh, and you have all the different ones. These are the different waves that are available on your thing. Um, you can then reuse them for several things. The actual sound effects are actually listed here. So this is a, one of the common mistakes that you do when learning um, how this works is that you don't understand why when you click one it doesn't represent the sound effect properly. Because here you're editing sound effect zero. And what you're telling sound effect zero here on this corner is that it's in full volume, and the wave that it's using is wave number two at this moment. If you wanted to use only in just wave number, I don't know, uh, nine, you see it changed to nine throughout the whole thing. I uh, can hit the key here to preview it. Sounds like that. And uh, the thing is, you don't have to use the same wave from the wave table on the whole sound effects. You can change between them at different points. So for example, here, on these three points in the middle, I'm going to switch back to uh, wave one. You see what it did there? So that's the trick, and we're editing SFX zero. If you go to SFX one, we start from scratch with a new one. In this case, it only has uh, wave zero, and I'm going to do, I don't know, switch to wave... Um, whatever this one is, eight at this point. Which sounds like it. Awesome. Uh, so um, we can create loops in it. And uh, the first one on here on the loop is the starting point. You have the information here, uh, the starting point of the loop and how long the loop is. So let's do like two bar loops. Starts on B, this is hexadecimal. So it goes up to nine and then starts A, B, C, D, F. So yeah, it sounds like that. Let's increase it a little bit. Okay, so this is how you create, uh, change or add multiple waves to the same sound effect. You can also do the same for the volume. For example, if you want lower volume on this particular loop point or whatever loop point you want, you don't have to use the same loop point as the wave. You can, for example, stay stuck here. loop there while the wave is looping elsewhere. Uh, you can do the same stuff for arpeggio if it uh, you have to decide decide if the arpeggio goes up or it goes down. By default it's up. If you click the button down it goes down and you can define the amount that it goes up and down. I'm gonna remove this loop here just so it's less confusing to understand what's going on. So you see it doesn't loop, but you can also define a loop for the arpeggio and the same thing with pitch shift. If you want to have a pitch shift by default on your on your sound effect, uh, you can define it here. Time 16 multiplies it by 16. Um, so yeah, and you can create different sound effects uh, out of this. You can try to make like a bass drum, a snare, just, you know, random sound effects, a pling, whatever you want. Uh, try to use the normal sinus or uh, sawtooth wave or uh, pulse wave to to do these kind of different sounds 
And then once you have uh, an, an amount of sound effects that you're happy with, you can move on to the tracker. And for that, you click here, the music editor, it's F5. Looks a little bit like this. It has another view though. This is the classic piano roll thing, but you can change to the tracker mode. It's the same thing, just different uh, way to, to see it. So if you're more used to tracker, this might be more convenient. I'm gonna explain it first on this piano roll. So from here, uh, first the things on top, the track is the track globally that you're using. You can save different tracks. Um, you're used on tracker formats to have a single track being available only, but here since this is made for a cart and you're supposed to have multiple tracks inside the thing, you can change between them between uh, here and you're working on a whole completely different track and you can call the different track from code uh, here accordingly. This is not related to patterns, so you can still have multiple patterns uh, inside the same track and this is where here it lists. They call them frames instead of patterns, I don't know why, that's just the name that they gave them. And here you're gonna say, I'm gonna use uh, pattern one or track one for this uh, pattern. And then here I'm gonna use two, here I'm gonna use zero, doesn't exist by reasons. And four, if you have like one, 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 it will replay the same thing four times. So this one, two, three, four is four different channels that you have. If you have the same, um, I want to call them track, but it's not track and it's not pattern either, but it's sort of a pattern. I don't know. Let's call it pattern for now. If you have the same pattern on both channel one on channel two, you're going to get double the, the loudness and the changes you do in one of them also affects the other one. So it's exactly the same pattern that it's been played on the different channel. So um, this is slightly different from what you have on standard trackers. You were used to having the same pattern. Uh, all the different channels have uh, the same thing. It has a few interesting uses, like for example, if you're repeating the same um, percussion element and you want to just change the melody, you can keep using the same pattern one for the, the percussion and you can use like two, three, two, three, four to change stuff while the same ch first channel always does the same percussion, exactly the same. So. Um, has its advantages, has its disadvantages. For me, it was more confusing than anything because I'm used to the standard tracking thing, but well, it has its uses. Anyways, what we are editing here is the one that is highlighted. So in this case, we're editing one. And uh, the way it goes is from top to bottom. If you press enter, you can see it scroll and enter again to stop. And here you can edit the notes by clicking. So I'm gonna do like C and then here I'm gonna do an F and here I'm gonna do a C again. And here I'm going to do like uh, a, a and a half. And if I press enter, so you can see it scrolling down and playing that. And that's all in the one. And if you see, if you highlight this next one, it's exactly the same pattern because it's the same pattern. It's one. Uh, if you go to two, you see that this changes because we're now working on the second one. So for the second one, let's uh, use another sound effect. You list the sound effect that you're using here. We only have one and two defined so far. Uh, so I'm gonna switch to two. I, I think I need to click here first and then change it. Sound effect starts by zero, zero, but the pattern starts from zero, one. Um, so yeah, I changed the SFX here. And then I can also change the octave that I'm playing since this piano roll here is limited to just one. So if I want to have, uh, instead of C4, if I want to have C5, I do here. And now this C is gonna be assumed as C5. If I go to tracker view, you can see here C5 on zero one. These are filled up because I put the same one and two. You can see here one, two, one, one. So these ones are automatically filled out with the same thing. And if I change something here, like for example, using SFX, it changes for all the other ones that exist. This is important that you realize this. Um, anyways, we're working on two and you can see, you can also edit here from the from this line. C6, C5. I couldn't figure out the shortcut to increase the octave. Uh, I'm used on Impulse Tracker to have the um, multiplication and divide uh, things on the keypad to change that, but they didn't do anything here. What you can do is go directly to the number and change it here. And then it will 
not even follow that one. So it's just confusing. Uh, there might be proper shortcuts for this. I just didn't bother finding them out. But if you do it from the piano roll, it's sort of easier to know the act octave you're on here directly. And like, let's try to do this. And it automatically uses the previous octave that you selected. So that's a bit better. And I think if I go back here and I type, it will be on the previous octave that I selected. Yeah, exactly. So that's another way of changing it, but you have to click back and forth and it's a bit annoying. Anyways, commands that exist on the tracker thingy. Uh, the cool thing is that you can see the information down here. Uh, the bad thing is that it only shows when you actually have uh, something on. So if you're like here on an empty, you don't see any info. And when you're starting out, this is very annoying because you want to know which commands you have available and you can't figure out how to even put a key working. You need to create a pattern first. Four, now a pattern exists and I can see what the command does. So M is the master volume for this um, channel pattern, whatever it is that it's called. Uh, C to play a chord, you can do some arpeggiato effects with that, which is what chiptune is all about. Um, you can read that the X and Y uh, information of the command are used to say which notes um, are, are part of the chord. Um, J is used to jump to another part of the, of the frame. Um, and uh, you have a slide, a, pine sh uh, a fine pitch, and a vibrato and a delay to re-trigger stuff. So uh, with this you can already do a lot of stuff. It's not as comprehensive as a lot of trackers out there, but you can do already some things. And to select them, you can just click here and do like uh, three, three, five. So this will play, um, this will change the volume to, to 35, three on the left side and right, and uh, five of volume on the right side. I uh, can only have one effect at each time, so uh, that's a bit uh, limiting. Uh, you have to do some trickery, like using um, some in-between space of effects to do some volume changes and stuff like that. It's particularly annoying if you're like starting a new uh, pattern completely and you want to make sure that it starts on certain volume, but at the same time you want to apply an effect. So that can be a bit annoying. Maybe use the previous pattern or something like that. On code, you can like call a pattern that you're not using for anything else just to set the master volumes and then jump to, uh, to you know, proper music pattern with already those values defined. Just an idea. You can, you can probably come up with other ones. Um, anyways, the rest is the usual stuff. The tempo defines the tempo. The speed defines the speed to which you're playing. Um, the rows, the number of rows in the thing. Uh, these buttons here are to mute the channels on and off, which can be useful if you want to focus on a specific channel. And yeah, and here is the number of rows that you're going through all the way down. And once you play, you have several commands to play. You can play just this frame. <laughs> Just 24, 64 is probably gonna end. Or loop, okay, whatever. Um, and um, you can also play the whole track, the whole thing, including all of the patterns that you just did, or frames as they call them. Or, um, or yeah, that's it. And stop to stop. Short key is enter. I really wish the short, the short key to um, start would be space, like in all the other trackers. Another little quirk that I wish was different, but um, yeah. So um, that was the, the, the thing it, to get the music playing here. I think you just have to call music and then you define the, the, the track, the row. Usually it's like, I think it's five of them and like this. This just starts playing, I think. Let's test that. No, it doesn't. Okay, close enough. Um, but I think it's this command. You have to look it up, though. But, uh, okay, I'm going to look it up. I think I still have that thing. Host it here, somewhere. Annotations in Lua. Let's search for music. Here we go. The track, the frame, the row, the loop, and sustain, if you want it to loop or not. So it should be right. Track zero, frame zero, row zero. Should be five. Why didn't it play? Maybe because I'm doing it per tick and it wants to just start here. 
that makes some sense. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, that's as easy as that. Um, so yeah, and then if you want to change stuff, you can uh, trigger it just one to play another music or to stop the music and configure the different uh, settings here. Anyways, uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Um, if there's anything that I said wrong by some reason, I'm not like a pro in Tick80, I only used it a couple of times, so feel free to correct me and put it on the information on the description on the comments below as well. I'll be happy to highlight it or pin it or some way. Um, so yeah, see you next video. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Happy tracking in the Tick80.